Welcome to Transformational Pathways, a podcast created by Toastmasters District 46 in the greater New York area, where we share conversations from influencers within the Toastmasters community and people whose lives have positively transformed by walking down the Toastmasters path. Whether you're just getting started in your career, have had recent career changes, or you're navigating different languages, we're here to help you build confidence by discovering new tools, overcoming your fears to find your voice, and engaging in a thriving community. Enjoy today's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Toastmasters District 46 Transformational Pathways Podcast. I am your host, Scott Mason. And walking the pathway with me today is our guest, Maeem Hawk. Maeem is a research and development program associate at the New York City Department of Education. Ah, oh, sounds fancy. Maeem, welcome to the show. Scott, I just have to say thank you for having me on, and I am super excited. Uh, we're excited, too. Now, I'm a little bit nervous here. I'm afraid you're just going to debate me into the ground, but <laughs> we'll talk about why in a few minutes. Explain for $5 words. I, all y'all Toastmasters, well, I'm a Toastmaster myself, so I shouldn't be calling y'all y'all, but Toastmasters come in here, and everyone seems to be doing something so fancy and so prestigious. What is a research and development program associate. So as you mentioned before, Scott, a lot has to do with fancy titles, but really in a nutshell, what I do is just simply look at different types of data, how we could tie it into the schools that we work for, and what we could do to make things better for not only the children within the schools, but along with the teachers, staff, families, etc. So you are actually doing some meaning-based work um, in a situation, <laughs> particularly our time and era, for a population that truly needs it. Absolutely, and that's what what, what was my calling, and I thought it to why not go for it. I absolutely love it. One of the things that I have found so inspiring about Toastmasters is the many ways in which it can help people, once they found their calling, be able to really reach for it, to develop themselves professionally, to get the soft and hard skills that they need to take their lives to another level. And I have a feeling that by the time this conversation's done, everyone in the room is going to understand why I said that just a little bit more. But why don't we start by hearing all about you, 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 Maeem. Where are you from? Yeah, sure. I'll be happy to take it away. So I was born and raised in the city my entire life in what is known as the best borough, Queens, the ah. most diverse borough, the world's borough. And I will proudly represent Queens till the day I die. I know that's a little extreme. Ooh. Well, I'm from Manhattan, and we, we take a little bit of umbrage with that. <laughs> but you know what? You're a debater. I know I'll lose that battle. So Manhattan <laughs> is going to temporarily concede today. Brooklyn, Bronx, all these other places, they will, I'm sure, have something to say about that on another episode. <laughs> what was it like for you growing up? And where in Queens were you? Yeah, sure. So early in my childhood, I grew up in Western Queens and later now I'm currently down in South Queens. And I have to say growing up in Queens has given me a very unique life experience that I am now now looking back and reflecting upon that a lot of people didn't have. Oh, what do you my mean? parents, sure, I'll be happy to clarify that. So my parents immigrated from a small country in South Asia called Bangladesh. And when we first immigrated to the U.S., they were really settled on the idea of Queens because of its, you know, racial diversity yeah. and because there's a lot of people from all different racial backgrounds here, different ethnic backgrounds. So growing up as a child, there was really no such thing as like a homogenous Queens classroom. Mm -hmm. My classmates, or I should say their families, came from different parts of the world, starting from South America, different parts of Asia, even Africa parts of the Caribbean. And all I have to say was that it was like a little mini United Nations inside my classroom. And there were like people from different walks of life and their families come from different parts of the globe. Now, when I was younger, of course, I didn't really take much consideration into that. But now growing older and reflecting on my, upon my own experience, I realize how valuable that life experience was. 
My Eam, I have to agree with you in the strongest terms. One of the things that I have found interesting about the Toastmasters experience during the past year and a half, 2020 and 2021, is that the transition to Zoom that pretty much every enterprise in the world had to at least partially adopt has opened the doors of the individual clubs to people from around the world. For instance, the podcast club, it's open to anyone, uh, no matter where you live. And the beauty of that is that it exposes the whole world to the full diversity that New York City has. I grew up in Kansas. It wasn't very diverse. I'll just, I'll say that. I love Kansas, but it wasn't very diverse. Here, Queens, I will say, it is the most diverse place I, I think I've ever been. Maybe Brooklyn, notwithstanding. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me, why do you think that has been so foundational to your experience? And how do you think that that has set you up for su- the success that you've had as you have moved into your career? Yeah, sure. So I'll be happy to talk about it. So I've grown up in Queens my entire life. I literally did my pre-K, now currently finishing up my master's. And for a little bit of spoiler context, I do plan on leaving Queens soon in the future. But of course, I will be back. But one of the things that I think was a very blessing of my experience, and it really came down when I started, when I started going, when I started at college, where I studied political science and sociology. These two Mm -hmm. subjects really gave me the lens to study the social world. And one of the things that really blew my mind and it never put into perspective is that the world from Queens is a very different place. And like you were saying before, Scott, you grew up in Kansas and I'm sure Queens and Kansas or even New York City (laughs) are are just like different worlds or different planets apart. (laughs) That one left me quiet. (laughs) I'm sorry to do that. (laughs) Yeah. So eventually you ended up and you went to college here in New York City. Is that correct? Yes. And And where did you go? And you probably already going to guess it. Queens College. (laughs) I would have been doggone upset if you had said anything otherwise. (laughs) And how did you end up discovering Toastmasters? Yeah, sure. So I'm actually going to give you a little bit of background context, right? Love it. And this actually starts off in high school. I remember during my senior year of high school, I wanted to take a public speaking class, right? I thought I was very outspoken. I was like so energetic. So I really wanted to practice my public speaking. So the very first day I go to high school, I enter the classroom, my public speaking class, and oh boy, oh boy, was it experience. Right. Well, it was it was to the point that one time during a speech, I just walked out of the speech. I was like, I can't do this. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. And what was going on? Oh yeah, sure. So one thing I didn't take into account was that when and I'm sure you, Scott, and other Toastmasters experienced this, that Doing something or saying something is very different from doing something. And that extends greatly to public speaking. So the moment you think public speaking looks easy, but there's like so many nuances to the art form of public speaking that it just like boggles your mind. And that's not something that I I just didn't know. And so my foundation or my pathway when I started that public speaking class really expanded my mind about the world of public speaking. Mm. And it just like really enshined upon me that there's a huge possibilities and the power that public speaking has for individuals. I cannot agree more with that. I always say that how we use our voice, both physically and metaphorically in the world is how we create ourselves. In fact, speaking is itself, in my opinion, an act of creation. And to the extent that our speech or our voice impacts the lives of others, it is inherently an act of leadership. And taking that seriously is one of the greatest opportunities, I believe, that becoming a wonderful public speaker has to offer. Do you align with that at all? Or are you just thinking? It's 100, crazy no, no, 100%. It's a firm belief that I have. So during my senior year of high school, I did know what Toastmasters is, 
but I didn't necessarily join a Toastmasters club immediately after that. Mm. Rather, there was a bit transition phase, right? So when I graduated from high school, I was a little defeated in my public speaking attempts. And in college, one of my coach, who's now my co, who was my coach at the time, was starting something new at Queens College. It was called the Queens College Speech and Debate Society. Mm. It was a competitive public speaking and debate organization that traveled across the country wow. to compete in public speaking and debate events. Um, just a long story short, I really loved it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was exhilarating. But at the same time, I wanted to grow even further mm -hmm. as a person, right? Mm -hmm. You know, solely doing things for the trophies is fun, but you kind of want a bit more substance to that, Absolutely. a bit more meaning, meaningful connections. Yes. And that's eventually what drew me to Toastmasters. How did you find out about Toastmasters then? So Toastmasters has been on the longest of my mind. I remember... When I was younger, I was so intrigued by the world championship in public speaking, and I was just like so blown by wow. how articulate these speakers are. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, this, this is phenomenal. When should I join? And it wasn't really until 2019 that I really wanted to push myself. I really wanted to get active. I really wanted to push myself out there because I thought to myself that, you know, I don't want to live in the bubble of my neighborhood, but I want to experience the greater diversity that the city has to yeah, offer. Yeah. So to do that, I downloaded the handy dandy meetup app. <laughs> I, I wanted something interesting to do with public speaking and debate. And next thing you know, on meetup, I find the perfect place, the Advanced Debaters Toastmasters <laughs> Club in Manhattan. <laughs> what? Was it like the first time you walked into a whole room of people who, on their free time, were debating? Oh, I have to say, it was an interesting experience because even though that club did do debates or conduct debates, we also followed the Toastmasters curriculum. We had our speeches, like, oh, like a regular Toastmasters club. And my first meeting, it's the funniest thing is that I actually walked in late to the meeting because I just didn't know where it was. Oh, yeah, my yeah. Aim, my yeah. Aim, my aim, my aim. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it, was <laughs> it, it was strange, but of course, you know, like any Toastmasters club, they were extremely welcoming. They they totally understood that I got lost. <laughs> it was an office building. Or I should say it was located in an office in a corporate building. So it was like, you know, you have to climb the steps, look for it. Right. So, you know, I sit down and I was just watching a debate round at that point. And I thought it was just so, like, so interesting because at that point I had previous experience in debate. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to talk a little bit about a little later. I was actually coaching debate too to middle school students at the time. Wow. Actually, let's have a little digression. Part of what's fun about podcasts is that we get to digress every now and then. How on earth did you end up doing that? And how did you find that experience? Yeah, sure. So to make so to just to really talk about it, right? So the Queens College Speech and Debate Society, we were really trying to put our names for ourselves. Yeah. My coach was doing a really phenomenal job, like going through volunteering websites, putting ads, flyers everywhere. And by a coincidence, an organization called the American Debate League was hosting their summer debate camps on Queens mm -hmm. College's campus. My boss, who at the time found the flyer, contacted my coach, and we just got in touch from there, and I'm still coaching right now. What do you find most gratifying about that? The most gratifying experience that I have is just reflecting upon my own public speaking and debate experience, where I was a little shy, timid. I was just like so out of the place. And for me to guide the next generation, in essence, public speaking and debate, it's such an honor because one of the things that I've been learning through my coaching experience is that you need to, like really anything in life, nothing can be transactional. You need to have yeah. some level of genu genuinity when you're dealing with this. And yeah. one thing that I've learned is the genuine relationships that I started forming with my students. So oh, a further bit of back context, the American Debate League, essentially um, coaches and t uh, provides public speaking and debate classes along with tournaments for elementary to high school students within the New York metro area, mm. uh, also Long Island and New Jersey. So when I started teaching there, I really wanted to, you know, do my magic. But of course, 
like I was mentioning before, teaching isn't this like transactional thing where you just teach it once. The kids are going to get in their head. Absolutely not. Rather, it's built on genuine connections you form with Mm -hmm. your students that you may not know you had an impact on them until uh, after a long period of time, really. Really inspiring. I've got to ask this. One of the reasons people tend to get involved in Toastmasters is because they believe it can help them professionally. It may be because they understand that the ability to articulate themselves in a public situation makes them a a more commanding presence or is just part of effective participation in the work world. Sometimes they really take to heart, as they should, Toastmasters' motto, which is where leaders are made. They want to be leaders. And having a program that ex- explicitly helps with leadership development, as Toastmasters mm-hmm. does, can take even the most ordinary, mild-mannered uh, individual and shape them into an authentic, powerful, and inspiring leader. But you went with the advanced debaters? Was it just because it was interesting? And even if it was just because it was interesting, what I don't understand is why, what benefit is being an advanced debater? Why should anyone care about that except when they visit Mm -hmm. their crazy uncle in, (laughs) in Elmhurst, they want to win the argument? Yeah, sure. So I actually want to give a little bit of back context to my personal journey within advanced debaters and then like touch upon the point that you brought up right now. And I think what's absolutely critical is the idea of professional development, right? Mm -hmm. You want to further grow and develop as a person. And Toastmasters is an excellent, excellent resource for someone to do that. So coming from the competitive college speech and debate world, I wanted a different experience. Like, I just don't want to give speeches or do debate competitions or rounds just for the sole purpose of me trying to gain a win, trying to gain uh, gain advantage or win the argument. So that's what really lured me to Toastmasters, different people from different backgrounds, rather than using it as a tool to necessarily attack each other, but also as a form of constructive dialogue Mm. to bridge gaps. And the thing that I loved about it Well, sure, of course, I love debating. I consider myself a professional debater, certified debate teacher. But at the same time, what really allures me is the idea of people talking about public speaking situations in their day-to-day lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you and other Toastmasters know about this, is when public speakers highlight or give a speech about a personal dilemma that they have, not only in their personal but also their professional lives yeah. and what they did to solve it. And that to me was just such an amazing appeal. Wow. I absolutely love it. Now, how has being a Toastmaster influenced your own professional life? And I'm particularly interested in hearing this because you are in the early phases of your career. So one might say, oh, he hasn't been out in the work world long enough for it to have any influence. But based on what I know about you and what I've read about you, that assumption probably ain't correct. Yeah, sure. I'll be happy to talk more about that. And like you said before, I'm still starting in my career. One of the things that made me a little nervous of entering the Toastmasters room was because I was very young compared to other people. Some individuals were like twice my age. And, you know, I just didn't have enough of that real world experience like you said so. But the thing that I loved about my uh, Toastmasters experience is that even though I may be the youngest there, I've always entered with like, you know, humility and the people reciprocated that. Like they didn't make me feel isolated. Instead, they welcomed me and some of my close friends are still in that club that give me a phenomenal career mm. advice, guidance. So in a way, though, really to hone on that perspective, and I guess it really applies to any young professionals like myself, if you want a safe organization or a safe space to further develop you as a per- person, Uh, Both personally and professionally, Toastmasters is an excellent resource. I love hearing that. Talk to me about exactly what your Mm. job is like and how public speaking, particularly debating, but even public speaking itself has played into your career uh, and how you have seen it uh, help you. Yeah, sure. So. I'm essentially working for a public sector agency. Mm -hmm. And really one of the things that I've learned throughout my 
few years of living or life, as you can say, is that I kind of really enjoy helping other people. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I kind of learned and it kind of hit upon me, and I'm sure, Scott, you get into those deep conversations with life with different mm -hmm. people, is that I'm really not a self, I would describe a self-made person, but rather a product of those who came before me. And one of the things that I've learned is that I essentially like to help people, mm -hmm. you know, working with my students is such a interesting experience. It, it just like brings me so much joy. Like I could tell you stories about how certain students strongly dislike me. <sighs> and even though I was like their side or after school teacher, I just ended up becoming their favorite teacher. Aww. And yeah, it was, it's just, it's just like so heartwarming. So I, I kind of discovered that I kind of want to pursue in the public sector, public right. service. I right. want to enhance and, we really improve the lives of the everyday citizen. And if you well, want to ask me a bit more why, ha happy to clarify. Of course, we want to know why. You can't just drop the seeds <laughs> and expect us not to bend over and pick it up. Yeah, sure. So a little bit of background context. Um, I'm also like a first generation college student. Right. Um, neither of my parents really graduated high school. So when I entered college for the very first time, it was like a new experience for mm -hmm. me. I just was mm -hmm. trying to figure out and navigate my way. Yeah. And one of the organizations that was a huge help to me. And if you're a working professional, I highly recommend this organization if you want to give back to others is an organization called America Needs You. America Needs You, for those who haven't heard, in a nutshell, or the best way I could describe it, is a fellowship program that provides intensive career and personal slash professional development for first-generation college students. And one of the hallmarks of the America Needs You pro program is not only do they provide these intensive career and development workshops, but they also provide... Uh, mentoring and strong guidance to their students, mm. to their fellows. And, and my mentor, who is an amazing man, was also someone that w focused or dedicated a large portion of his life to the public sector, to giving back to others. Yeah. And his life story definitely had a lot of obstacles, a lot of hurdles. So his influence also rubbed on me saying that maybe this is the career path that I want to explore and enter. Really inspiring. I love hearing stories like that. Maim, where do you see yourself going professionally? And how do you see your Toastmasters experience complementing or helping or otherwise impacting what your life is going to be like? Yeah, sure. Happy to answer that. So I kind of brought it up earlier in the podcast. For spoilers, I will be moving to Queens. And I, I, I was very blessed to have been accepted to Carnegie Mellon's Master's of Public Policy program. Bam! Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So I was accepted to their Washington, D.C. track. The first year, I'll be in Pittsburgh. The second year, I'll be in Washington, D.C., where I, hopefully I'll be working during the day, take my classes at night. Excellent. And it's really excited for me because, you know, a lot of the federal government agencies are located in D.C. Absolutely. And D.C. has a very, very strong Toastmasters culture. So the way I see myself there is... I also want to learn further from the Toastmasters Club there. Like, I've been reading up about it, did a quick Google search, and I found that there's some of them actually even meet on Capitol Hill, from my Whoa. understanding. So I, I would love to, you know, get involved in the future. I absolutely love that. One of the things I love about being a Toastmaster generally is that mm -hmm. you can travel anywhere in the world and there's always a club. And I know Toastmasters that just randomly pick clubs in locations that they might be visiting on vacation or for work and just pop in just to experience the whole thing. I have gone lobbying in D.C. before, and it occurs to me next time I go, I may have to pop by a Toastmasters club there. I absolutely love But, you know, you can always stay in touch with District 46 through Zoom or other sorts of, of mechanisms that we have. Let me ask you the following question, Maim. One of the things that I am curious about with regards to some of the themes that you've touched on earlier is non-transactional natures of the relationships that you choose to engage in, really thinking deeply about building connections that are long-term, not just, boom, I've met you, I've gotten what I need from you, I'm done, oh, who are you, sorts of things. Talk to me a little bit about how Toastmasters has helped you and can help anyone who might be watching or listening to this build the, those sorts of relationships or learn how to build those sorts of relationships. 
Absolutely, Scott. And just to, to clarify again, right, I really do think Toastmasters is a really excellent, supportive environment. So if you're not a member of the Toastmasters Club, I think you already know what my answer is going to be. <laughs> but in terms of like those transactional um, agreements, really, when I was like first, you know, trying to figuring out this world of networking, uh, to me, I thought networking is like, hi, bye, grab a business card yeah. and call it a day. Yeah. But one of the things I've been learning a lot more about networking is that, sure, while you do meet people in a professional environment, it's also how you carry yourself over with them yes. and how you keep in touch with them. Yeah. By building upon that relationship, not only do you form like a really cool friendship, but you're also able to ask for assistance or, or for yeah. greater help with anything. Yeah. And it's, it's actually how I got on this podcast. One of my good friends, really mentor, and he's the one that really helped me throughout my Toastmasters journey. His name is Philip Cow, a phenomenal person. And one of the things that I liked about Philip was that he was serving at, at the time, the vice president of advanced debaters, Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. He personally gave me a lot of guidance and support navigating it around. And he, even though he was uh, older than me, he was willing to always like, you know, give me life advice, not only on personally, but also professionally. Oh, and wow. I really admire that about him. And another individual who I think is absolutely phenomenal, the sweetest woman on earth. Her name is Mary Johnson. And Mary was also that person for me, trying to give me advice. She always reaches out to me time to mm. time, asking me how I'm doing. And it's like those like genuine connections, yeah, right? Yeah. So oh, that, that's what I, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. My aim, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, if you dare, where do you see yourself? What do you imagine yourself doing? One of the things that I've learned, especially in my Toastmasters journey, is that you may not necessarily see yourself exactly in one place, but if you have certain values aligned with your beliefs and your experiences, you'll eventually get to that place, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I've learned from the very start of my young professional journey is that there's been so many closed doors for me, but at the same time, there were so many phenomenal doors opening in front of me mm -hmm. that I realized that if those doors didn't open for me, I wouldn't be here where I am currently now. And I'm further anticipating that in the future, in the near future as well, where there's certain things that are going to open up for me and I think I told you what my values and missions kind of align with. So I see myself definitely heading towards that route. And wherever it opens up, I'll be happy to take as long as I know that it's something meaningful for me. What a positive attitude. Actually, that was going to be the last question. But taking you in for a minute, and I hope those of you that are listening, take a couple of seconds to go to YouTube and look at the actual video version of this, because I think you will get the full impact. As I'm talking to you, Maeem, thinking about where you're going to go and imagining your future for you, one of the things that I believe will serve you well is that energy level that you have. You really bring presence and positivity into the room and it comes right through the screen tell folks where does that come from i don't remember where i heard this quote from i think a friend of mine told me this and this quote really stuck to me and i think we as human beings we engage in a form of flaw where we're trying to constantly search for the next thing yeah. or something that's going to make us happy and what my friend told me is that it's a luxury to pursue something that makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue something that you find meaningful. Mm -hmm. And it really has changed my perspective and yeah. what I want to do and grow. Yeah. It's funny. I personally am a strong believer in the moral imperative that's associated with once you've connected to your meaning, pushing for that and have personally found, and I've heard this from so many other Toastmasters, that it pushes them forward as well. One of the things that is so great about Toastmasters and all of our guests, including you, have really brought this to the table is how the meaning that Toastmasters can help us all find in our lives brings amazing energy into the room 
I love having the privilege to do this show so I can meet and hear from inspiring folks just like you and all the other guests that we've had. My Eam, how can we find out more about you? Anyone that might want to connect with you or, mm-hmm. or just learn more about your journey, mm-hmm. where can they go? Yeah, sure. So LinkedIn is the best place. That's really the only social media that I use. If anyone wants to connect with me from there, feel more than free. I'll be more than happy to connect. Though it might be better if you give me a little personalized invite. So then (laughs) I don't fall for those multi-level, you know, marketing schemes. Yes. Yes. (laughs) We'll save a discussion about that for another podcast. (laughs) And and by the way, your statement about using LinkedIn, that is a true networker, someone who understands the power of LinkedIn as a networking tool. It also is an excuse for me to remind anyone who's listening or watching to go to the district's LinkedIn page and please connect with us and follow us. My aim, it has been great having you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your story. Absolutely, Scott. And all I have to say is thank you for having me. Oh, was, I really enjoyed it. I, people are going to love listening to you or, or watching this. For those of you who are listening or watching, mm-hmm. if you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe and, and leave a review or a comment. Also, don't forget to follow District 46 on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook, as well as Twitter. And if you're new to Toastmasters, or interested in joining us, check out Toastmasters46.org. That's Toastmasters46.org to learn more about us or to visit one of our clubs. Because Toastmasters is where leaders are made. Thank you so much for joining us on Transformational Pathways. If you enjoyed today's episode or got anything out of it, please rate, review, and subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more about Toastmasters District 46, check out the link in the show notes below.